Rahim, Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, the 23rd meeting of the Ministers of Foreign Affairs, uh, Ministers of Foreign Economic and Foreign Trade Activity of SCO member states begins in Islamabad today. The meeting was preceded by the meeting of the Commission of Senior Officials from 10th to 11th September in Islamabad to negotiate the documents to be adopted by the 23rd meeting of the ministers of SCO member states responsible for foreign economic and foreign trade activities. The two-day ministerial meeting is a regular annual mechanism of SCO and will make important contributions in the lead up to the head of council, head of state meeting in Islamabad. The secretary general of the International Maritime uh, Organization, uh, Arsenio Antonio Velasco arrived in Islamabad last night for a three-day visit. This is the first ever visit to Pakistan by any Secretary General of IMO. Secretary General Velasco will hold meetings with Pakistan's leadership and senior government officials in Islamabad and Karachi. Today he is participating in the International Maritime Business and Finance Conference in Islamabad. Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Muhammad Isaq Dar is the chief guest at the conference. In his remarks at the International Maritime Sustainability Exhibition and Conference, the Deputy Prime Minister underlined the importance of fostering peaceful relations, ensuring shared prosperity and addressing common challenges of security, environmental protection and sustainable resource management. He underlined Pakistan's steadfast commitment to upholding the highest standards of maritime safety and environmental stability. He outlined Pakistan's priorities for a vibrant blue economy as a key pillar for economic development and for the sustainable utilization of marine resources for economic growth, job creation, and environmental stewardship. The Deputy Prime Minister also explained the importance accorded by Pakistan as a maritime nation to expanding trade in fisheries and maritime trade, promoting coastal tourism and offshore resources including gas and petroleum. Pakistan strongly condemns the airstrikes by Israeli occupation forces on the Al Mawasi humanitarian zone in Khan Yunus, Gaza, on 10th of September, which claimed the lives of 40 civilians. Executed in an area designated as a safe zone for displaced persons by the Israeli occupation forces themselves, constitutes a flagrant violation of international humanitarian law. The carnage in Khan Yunus, without prior wa warning and in defiance of basic protections, demonstrates a disregard for human life and Israel's genocidal designs against the Palestinian people. The targeting of individuals seeking refuge in a designated safe zone represents a gross breach of international humanitarian law, which necessitates the protection of civilian populations and humanitarian zones. We call on the UN Security Council to play its role in preventing Israeli occupation forces from continuing with their genocidal campaign against the Palestinian people and holding them accountable for their war crimes and crimes against humanity. We strongly condemn the recent decision by the Delhi High Court to uphold the Indian decision to proscribe several political parties advocating the rights of the Kashmiri people. Banning of indigenous political parties is part of India's relentless campaign to subjugate the Kashmiri people, stifle dissent, and consolidate its occupation of Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Parties that advocate the rights of the people of Jammu and Kashmir are being silenced under the Unlawful Activities Act, UAPA, a law that has increasingly been used as a tool for repression of the Kashmiri people. Indian judiciary's role in legitimizing these actions follows recent decisions 
sanctioning the suppression of legitimate political voices in Jammu and Kashmir. Last year, the Indian Supreme Court upheld the illegal and unilateral acts of 2019 in IIOJK. We urge India to remove the ban on all political parties illegally outlawed in IIOJK, respect the rights and freedoms of the Kashmiri people, release all political prisoners and human rights defenders, and faithfully implement the UN Security Council resolutions on Jammu and Kashmir. I thank you all.